DNA profiling can be a powerful tool in the investigation and prosecution of crime. You may have watched police TV dramas that routinely use this technique. You may have read news stories about cold cases that DNA profiling has helped to resolve, sometimes many years later. In 1995, New Zealand became only the second country in the world to legislate for the collection of DNA samples for use in criminal investigations and for the building of a data bank to store the DNA profiles obtained from those samples. Under that legislation, DNA samples can be obtained by compulsion or by consent. And the resulting DNA profile is generally used in one of two ways. First, it can be used to build an investigative lead. This happens when the profile of a known person already stored on the data bank matches to a DNA profile from a bodily sample left at a crime scene. Secondly, a DNA profile can be used to confirm the direction of an investigation. This happens when a DNA sample is obtained from an identified suspect who is not already on the data bank for matching to a crime scene sample. Over the years, the legislation has changed the way in which a DNA sample is collected physically and it has widened the situations in which that sample can be either requested or compelled. But the legislation is still built on the science of 1995 and that focused on simple identification of a person. That explains why DNA has sometimes been referred to as the modern fingerprint. But while our fingerprints are unique, we share our DNA with our ancestors, our parents and siblings, our children and beyond. And science has moved enormously since 1995. DNA profiling can not only identify who we are, it can now also tell quite a lot about us. It can predict what we might look like, what our ethnicity might be, who our relatives are, and even what health conditions we might have. In the context of criminal investigations, that advance in science raises real questions about privacy and human rights that the legislation simply cannot answer because Parliament could not have debated those questions in 1995. In this review, we think it's time to have that debate and we welcome your views. If you want to read about what happens now, you can explore some DNA stories and links to other information. If you'd like to read more about the questions we raise before you tell us what you think, you can go to the issues paper. You can read individual chapters or you can download the whole paper. Whenever you're ready to have your say, you can go to the form and fill it in directly from this website, or you can get in touch with us by email or by post. We're consulting on the questions until the 1st of March, 2019.